things done. Because when Mecklenburg County is a better county as a result of what happens in Raleigh, we all are better. The state is better. Right. And sometimes the party that's in charge, the party that's in charge now, is the party, the ruling party. Mm. Mm. And they have an opportunity to bring forth things that, well, the Republicans are in control now. So they have a, an opportunity to bring things bring forth laws that fa they favor, that favor them. We want to keep our seat, and this is a Democrat seat, and we want to keep it that way. So what we, we, we have to do, we have to work together. You know, nobody can work by themselves in a silo, in isolation. Correct. It takes all people, and that's why our Constitution states that of the people, for the people, and by the people, and that's, and that's what we are about. One of the issues that we have in our community is unemployment. How would you handle that when it pertains to the 40th district? You know what, we, um, we've seen a lot of changes. We're constantly going to China, going to these, some other countries, trying to bring manufacturing back. When it comes to unemployment, when we shut down a lot of mills in North Carolina, a lot of manufacturing and sent it overseas, it created a big gap. What we have now is we do have industries that are coming and we need training to meet some of these new jobs because they're jobs that we've never heard of. That's where education comes in, the community colleges. That's where it comes in, the trade industries, in high schools as we continue to provide internships, apprenticeships, even at the high school level, to prepare people for the jobs of the future. Now many of the new jobs are jobs that we've never heard of. That's what we're gonna be seeing. And that's where we have to be prepared and as I look at some of the statistics that it tells us that we do have more jobs going unfilled than should be left that way. Mm -hmm. So we must have people who are qualified and trained to meet the needs. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are areas where we must train where we must provide skill, a labor force to fill jobs. I was talking to one German company that was coming to, to North Carolina. And one of the things that they said, as this small town was, was recruiting them, they didn't have the labor force to meet the demands of the job. I don't want to call names, but we have several companies that we're working with that are relocated here in this area in Mecklenburg County. And we need to have even more, but we gotta provide that labor force to meet those demands. Our community colleges are now doing, putting in different programs, technological programs, high skill programs to meet the needs of growing employment. Our high schools gotta step up, we gotta do more. It may be costly for the instructions, for the instructors, but I think in the end it's gonna make a difference. We gotta go out and recruit, we gotta go overseas, we gotta and, and bring those industries here to Mecklenburg County. And we have one, uh, we have some German, some that have come from German, Germany there in this county. So we gotta continuously recruit, we gotta be, competing also with some of our largest cities as we provide incentives for these industries to come to Mecklenburg County and to provide jobs. So recruitment is gonna be number one, of businesses, of industries to come here, training of a qualified force to meet those demands of employment of the future, and that's number two. And those are the two big issues that we must work on to make a difference. 
And number three, we must educate our public of the importance because we must go hand in hand in lockstep to make this happen. No longer are we truly an agriculture community like we used to be. However, we do have a lot of farms, but farm, farming is done a little bit differently than it was done 20, 25 years ago. We still have technology there. We've reduced a lot of the manual label that was once needed. And so that's why training is so important because we're really stepping up. And then as your representative for the 40th district, Senate district of which I will be, mm -hmm. I will work hard and diligently to make sure that we have the training to help to put forth laws, legislation that will provide funds for our community colleges, for career and technical education in our high schools. And we have found that that makes a lot of difference because we have a lot of students who are not college bound, but they can make a great living as contributing citizens, as people who are able to take care of their own families, and as people who can enjoy life in the pursuit of happiness through career and technical education training. It doesn't have to be a four year, but they must have the skills necessary to function in today's society. How about the section of our community whereas they're not being able to get some type of employment due to prior criminal background checks, prior to some type of ex-offender actions. What, how do we solve that issue within the 40th district? Within the 40th district, I think people need to be educated and need to be aware. Many of them think that because they're an ex-offender that they cannot be employed. You can be employed. You know, you have to pay your debt to society. And as a result of paying your debt to society, that allows you to move forward. There are programs still available to help those and still there are jobs, even though you're an ex-offender, for you to be gainfully employed. And so we have to look at the positive outlook of a negative situation, a negative choice that you made, a negative experience that you encountered. And as we think about even people who are incarcerated they can register and vote. They can register even if they're incarcerated, but you have to deal with it on an individual basis. And sometimes it's different for every individual. So there is something that each person can contribute to society, to the political process, right. even though you're waiting to be able to vote. You're, you're paying your debt to society for what you've done. And then you mentioned about some other things co uh, co that may relate to discrimination. Correct. We cannot, th 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 there are laws that protect individuals from discrimination. You cannot discriminate because of race, religion, natural origin, or those circumstances that violate individual rights that violate human rights. And if discrimination exists because of that, there are avenues that you take to make certain that discrimination does not exist. So even though a person has been incarcerated, they're paying their debt to society, they are still important. You know something? Everybody is somebody, hmm. and God is over us all. Yes, ma'am. Everybody is somebody, and every human being is worthy, and every human being contributes to society, living and breathing and walking around <laughs> and interacting with other people in the community. While you're paying your debt to society, you hand out leaflets, hmm. you encourage others, you knock on doors, you collect signatures, 
and you make it happen too. Let's look into the topic of briefly on education. I know charter schools. And let me throw another thing at you. Um, pace or teacher's pay scale. Talk a little bit about each one of those if you can. Okay, let's talk about um, teacher pay first okay. and then we talk about charters. North Carolina is near somewhere near 47, 48 when it comes to teacher pay. We've got to change that. It must be changed. Here in Mecklenburg County, we have about 8,000 um, who are employed as educators. And for the past five years, we have not gotten a substantial pay raise. That's, that must change. And if it does not change, we look at Virginia, we look right here at South Carolina, people will go right there and that oftentimes make as much as $10,000 more. We can't have that because when it comes to educating children, we want our brightest, we want our best in our classrooms standing before students and teaching them. In order to do that, we must pay people well. They must have jobs so that they don't have to go out and get two or three jobs in order to make it happen. And so we're calling upon our governor to make a difference. He has said he's going to commit this session to looking at teacher pay because we are almost embarrassed having been one of the most thriving states when, at one point with teacher pay and now look where we are. We want to be proud of our state. We want to be proud of our teachers. We want to pay them well. Teaching is a noble job and it's a very important job. Touching the lives of many children. We have 144,000 students in Mecklenburg County, in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and they deserve great teachers. Teachers deserve great pay. When I go to Raleigh, that's one of the things that I'll be emphasizing, teacher pay. It has to happen. It starts with an educated workforce and moves forward. It starts with training children, early childhood and preschool, and excellent teaching in every classroom, and they deserve to be compensated. Dr. Waddell, we're running out of time. I really appreciate you coming on the show. I'd like to invite you to come back because there's so many different issues, topics that our community would like to know your views on. And I'd like to invite you back. I'd love to be back and thank you thank so you much for having thank me. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Joyce Waddell, she's a candidate for the Senate seat 40th district in North Carolina. Thank you for watching the show and you be encouraged.